Introducing this excellent composition of the Gatu of true faith in the Nembutsu, saying the Buddha's name, Namo Amida Butsu, Master Shinran expressed his deep gratitude to Shakyamuni Buddha for his true Dharma teaching on Amida Buddha and his fulfilled land of peace and bliss. Thus, taking refuge in the true words of the great sage and carefully examining the commentaries of the great patriarchs, I realize the depth and vastness of the Buddha's benevolence. So, I compose the following Gatu of true faith in the Nembutsu. Listening deeply to the commentaries of the seven great pure land masters before him, he meticulously highlighted their essential teachings on the true pure land way that he himself would single-heartedly follow. Poetically written in classical Chinese, these four-line verses captured the intimate kindness and exhortations of the pure land masters. They fervently urged all mundane foolish persons, like ourselves in this Dharma ending age, to single-heartedly entrust themselves entirely to Amida Buddha and the primal vow which promises to free everyone from the vicious cycle of birth, suffering and death. With profound gratitude to the Buddhas, Master Shinran wrote, Entrusting myself to the Tathagata of infinite life, I take refuge in the inconceivable light. Bodhisattva, Dharmakara in his practicing stage, under the guidance of Buddha, Loksvara Raja, examined the causes that create the various Buddha's pure lands, and the good and evil of humans, and devas in those lands. He established the unsurpassed, incomparable vow, and boldly declared this extremely rare, universal vow. And after five kalpas of deep contemplations and reflections, he strongly pledged that his name shall be heard in the ten directions. Everywhere, he sends forth immeasurable, boundless light, unhindered, incomparable, majestically brilliant light. Pure light, joyful light, the light of wisdom, continuous, inconceivable, ineffable light. The light that outshines the sun and moon, illuminating countless worlds. The multitudes of beings are all embraced by his light. The name embodying the primal vow, is the act of true settlement. This vow of joyful entrusting with a sincere mind is the cause of birth. We will realize the stage equal to enlightenment and supreme nirvana, and through the fulfillment of the vow, we will surely attain nirvana. The reason for the Tathagata's appearance in this world, is solely to teach the ocean-like primal vow of the Meda. The multitudes of beings in this evil age of the five defilements, should entrust themselves to the absolute true words of the Tathagata. When the one thought moment of entrusting joy is awakened in one's mind, Nirvana will be attained without severing blind passions. Commoners, sages, Dharma offenders and slanderers alike are thus converted like water from all sources, acquiring the same taste on entering the ocean. The embracing light of compassion illumines and protects us always. Having already broken through the darkness of our ignorance, still the clouds and mists of greed, desire, anger and hatred, constantly obscure sky of true and real Shinjin. But just like the light of the sun being blocked by clouds and mists, beneath those clouds and mists, there is brightness, not darkness. So on receiving Shinjin, we experience gratitude and great joy and instantly transcend crosswise the five evil courses. All ordinary foolish persons whether good or evil, when they have heard and entrust in the universal vow of the Tathagata, the Buddha called them persons of vast excellent understanding, who are also named by people as Pundarikas. 
Amida Buddha's primal vow that embodies saying his name, for arrogant sentient beings with perverted views, to accept and be blessed with Shinjin is difficult indeed. It is the most difficult of all difficulties that anyone could meet. The treatise masters from India to the West, and the eminent monks from China and Japan, clarified the true intent of the great sage's appearance in this world, revealing that Amida's primal vow accords with the capacities of beings. Chakyamuni to target and on Mount Lanka, prophesied to the masses that in South India, Mahasattva Nagarjuna would appear in this world to dispel the views of being and non-being. Proclaiming the unexcelled Mahayana teachings, he realized the stage of joy and was born in the land of peace and bliss, revealing that difficult practices are like hardships on the overland way. He urged us to take the easy path of Shinjin, sailing joyfully by waterway. When one deeply remembers Amida Buddha's primal vow, naturally in that instant, one enters the stage of definitely settled, and solely saying the Tathagata's name always, gratefully respond to great compassion's universal pledge and grace. Bodhisattva Vasubandhu, composing a treatise declared, that he himself took refuge in the Tathagata of unhindered light. In accordance with the Sutras, he revealed the true and real, and elucidated the great vow of crosswise transcendence. Through the power of his primal vow, Amida directs his merits, manifesting the one mind in order to save the multitudes of beings. So when one takes refuge and enters the great treasure ocean of virtues, definitely, one obtains entry into Amida's great assembly. When one reaches that lotus store world, one instantly realizes the body of suchness or dharma nature. Playing in the forest of blind passions, one uses transcendental powers, entering the garden of birth and death, one uses skillful means to guide others. Facing toward the dwelling of our teacher Tan Luan, the emperor of Liang paid tribute to him as a bodhisattva. When he received the Pure Land teachings from Tripitaka Master Bodhi Ruchi, Tan Luan burnt his Taoist scriptures, and took refuge in the land of bliss. Bodhisattva Vasubandhu explains in his treatise, that the fruition of the fulfilled land is itself manifestation of the vow. Going to the Pure Land and returning, are merit transference of other power, and the cause of true settlement, is solely due to Shinjin. When the deluded and defiled, mundane foolish person awakens Shinjin, that person realizes, knowing that birth and death is nirvana. Without fail, that person will reach the land of immeasurable light, and then, universally guides all sentient beings to enlightenment. Tao Cho asserted that achieving realization by the path of sages is difficult, clarifying that only the pure land way could deliver us. He downgraded the diligent practices of myriad good and self-power, urging us to solely say the name endowed with perfect virtues. With deep concern, he taught the three aspects of entrusting and of doubt, and compassion in the Dharma ages of semblance, ending, and extinction. So, those with lifelong evil, should solely depend on the great vow, realizing the perfect fruit of Nirvana in the land of serene sustenance. Shantao alone, understood the Buddha's true intent. Pitying meditative and non-meditative practices, and people of grave evil, he revealed that Amida's light and name, are the cause and condition of birth, when they enter the wisdom motion of the primal vow. Followers would certainly receive the diamond-like mind, when the one thought moment of joy and gratitude arises. Like Vaidehi, 
they would similarly acquire the three insights, and instantly realize the eternal bliss of Dharma nature. Jen Shin widely expounded the Buddha's lifetime teachings, yet, he took refuge in the land of peace, urging others to do the same. Discerning that single-minded practice is profound, sundry practice is shallow, he differentiated the respective births in the fulfilled or transformed lands. Extremely evil persons, should just say the Buddha's name, who has already grasped and embraced me. Though blind passions have obscured my eyes, and I cannot see, great compassion is untiring and constantly illumines me. Our teacher Genku was well versed with Buddhism, and he showed pity on ordinary foolish people, whether good or evil. By spreading the true teaching and realization in this scattered land, he propagated widely the selected primal vow to this evil world. Our continued return to this cyclic home of birth and death, is certainly due to the hindrance of doubt. Swift entrance into the peaceful, uncreated realm of bliss, is necessarily brought about by Shinjin. The Mahasattvas and teachers of the tradition who propagated the sutras, save boundless beings of grave evil and defilements. Both monks and lay people of this present age, should, with one mind, solely trust in these great masters' expositions. These wonderful verses convey a clear message from Master Shinran and the seven great teachers of the true pure land tradition. They exhort us to take refuge single-heartedly in Amida Buddha, abandoning all self-power efforts and sundry practices for attaining emancipation and entrust ourselves entirely to the primal vow. Knowing with certainty that we are assured of salvation here and now, we naturally say the excellent name endowed with perfect virtues, in deep gratitude for the great compassion of Amida Buddha. Let us listen deeply to this beautiful Gatu and hear the call of boundless compassion, accepting the inconceivable gift of Shinjin, the entrusting faith freely bestowed by Amida Buddha on all helpless persons and be forever freed from the firm clutches of pain and suffering in the relentless cycle of samsara at the end of our wretched lives in mortal flesh. The Buddha's infinite merits and virtues are bestowed equally on all beings. May all accept Amida's gift of Shinjin, and obtain birth in his land of peace and bliss. Namo. Amida. Butsu. Namo. Amida. Butsu. Namo. Amida. Butsu.